Why do we get sick when stressed? In this video, we'll be looking at the following. The process of stress response, the symptoms that may arise from stress, how stress impacts our health, habits influencing stress levels, and the resources available to manage stress. So to start off, what happens in our body when we're stressed? Within our body, the autonomic nervous system, or ANS, involuntarily manages our bodily functions and can be divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Under stress, the sympathetic nervous system takes control of the body. When encountering a stress stimuli, the first response is a release of the stress hormone norepinephrine from a part of the brain called the locus ceruleus. Norepinephrine is able to then activate the HBA axis by acting on the paraventricular nucleus in the hypothalamus of the brain. HPA axis, or hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, named to represent the three major endocrine glands involved in the stress response. The hypothalamus, when stimulated, releases the hormone known as CRH, which activates pituitary gland, releasing ACTH, and finally releasing cortisol that is used to immobilize energy stores in the body. These adverse effects arising from stress response may start off as physical symptoms such as increase in muscle tension, rise in heart rate, heightened blood pressure, changes in appetite, increased sensations of the stomach leading to nausea or vomiting, issues with digestion leading to constipation or diarrhea. However, in the long run, research has shown that almost all body systems can be influenced by stress. This is where the issue of stress on our health, particularly our immune system, comes along. A meta-analysis of 300 articles conducted by Sergiston and Miller found that while short-term stress leads to an increase in the natural immunity response and a decrease in the specific immunity response, long-term and or chronic stress can lead to individuals experiencing a decrease in both natural and specific immunity. To further understand this finding, let's take a step back and look at the function of the immune system, which is to protect the human body from environmental agents with the help of white blood cells. The function of the immune system can be divided into natural and specific immunity. Natural immunity is compromised of cells that can attack many different pathogens in a short period of time. So this immunity is important in early stages of viral infections, while specific immunity characterized by greater specificity and less speed is needed in targeting specific viruses or cells involved in an infection. However, during periods of stress, the HBA axis releases stress hormones which are capable of binding to specific receptors on the white blood cells. This in turn alters the white blood cell distribution and function leading to an imbalance of one or more of the following antigens, antibodies, cytokines, and hormones. As their body remains an extended period of stress. This imbalance of messenger molecules makes the immune system response inefficient leading to a decrease in natural and or specific immunity. Answering our question of why an individual experiencing stress is more likely to get sick. And now that we've learned the detrimental effects of stress, we should probably take a closer look at our habits to see if they're contributing to preventing our stress. Major habits have been found to be lack of sleep, heavy physical activity, food deprivation, While stress preventative and immune system strengthening habits include mindfulness meditation, moderate exercise, and a well-balanced diet.
Therefore, in today's society, everyone experiencing stress due to pressures from different aspects of life, it is important to keep in mind that there are habits that can be avoided and habits that can be adapted to prevent the detrimental effects of stress. Thank you for your time and for more videos like this, check out Demystifying's seminar webpage or YouTube page. The links have been provided in the description.